My gaming table is in serious need of an upgrade. So, I built myself some new terrain. For the past few weeks, I have mostly been just sat down in front of my computer, making miniatures in Blender or just staring at AI-generated art. So I decided to give myself a bit of a break from the screen and make some scratch-built terrain instead. Plus, my game Spire Seas is in desperate need of a little more playtesting and improvement. Now, a little while ago, I built myself a miniature diorama for Spire Seas, and it turned out pretty good, but it's not something that I can use on the tabletop. So for this project, I needed something big enough to play on, something that would blend in with the table, and something that was pretty quick and easy to make. And of course, something that would fit with the post-apocalyptic aesthetic of Spire Seas. So, my first step this time was to break out my two foot by two foot ocean board and lay out some basic shapes. I needed something that would provide enough space to plop some models on, but still allow for boats to pass through the middle. And being limited to a two foot by two foot board, that meant I was pretty constricted in how big these shapes could get. But I eventually decided on just a few basic little L shapes. Then I grabbed a few scraps of XPS foam that happened to be about the right size and shape and started cutting. I got a huge sheet of this stuff at the hardware store about a year ago, and I've not really been putting it to good use. Until now. The thickness of this material gives it a bit more heft and allows it to stand up better on its own, without needing to sculpt a separate base. For this one though, I did want a bit of a flat open space in the middle for models to stand on, so I ended up using a piece of MDF. This would add a little more weight and a little more structure to the design. Then I cut in a couple of holes to give it more of a ruined building look and provide some more strategic options for players. Once I was happy with the overall shape and design, I got started gluing everything together with some hot glue including a couple platforms to represent different floors of the building. Spire Seas is, after all, a game about spires, so I tried to add at least three floors of playable space. And eventually, I decided to add a little bridge and a secondary, smaller structure. The bridge was a bit flimsy, so after picking out and weathering the edge, I added two beams of styrene for support. Moving on to detailing. I made a quick DIY texturizer out of some kitchen foil and gave all of the surfaces a passover. Some of these surfaces already had a bit of texture, so it didn't do as much as I was expecting, but it did help bring everything together, and it did especially help to soften out those edges. Next, I broke out my bits box and put together a few more Gundam bits into something that I thought looked vaguely sci-fi mechanically-ish. I didn't need quite as much detail as I put into my diorama, but I did want to add something a little sci-fi. Then I glued it in and ran some wires up and over the piece, and did the same thing for the second structure. Finally, I started adding some rubble. Initially, by just super gluing some little broken bits of foam core onto the structure itself, but eventually I realized that I had a little bit of diorama gravel. This pack was from Daiso and only cost me about 100 yen, and I've been really meaning to put it to use. So, I mixed up some watered down PVA and just kind of went to town, adding in some gravel, some crumpled up little bits of styrofoam, and a few strips of styrene to serve as metal bars or bits. And as for building, that was it. So far, pretty quick and not too difficult. But next, it was time for paint. To keep it cheap and simple, I just used some dollar store acrylic. I mixed together a little bit of white and some black to get a nice dark gray color. This was pretty effective, but it did create one problem. When I inevitably ran out of paint on one surface, I had to mix up another batch and try to color match my gray, which was usually not very successful. 
However, this is a ruined building in a post-apocalyptic world, so I don't really care that much that the concrete doesn't match, and I knew I was going to add a lot of stuff on top of it later anyway. So no problem. In fact, I ended up taking this a little bit further and just sponging in some rusty brown. This is, after all, a post-apocalyptic building, so it has to have rust. Next, it was time to try out some dry brushing. I did have a bit of a bad experience with this on my last miniature, so I figured I needed some practice, and what better practice than a swath of flat gray. I used a cheap makeup brush from the dollar store and some of my army painter uniform gray. I also made sure to pay extra attention to that waterline crust to give it a nice salty barnacle look that you sometimes see on concrete pillars or pylons. Then I got out my basic mini painting brush and began adding in some finer details, including things like gunmetal and rust on all of the machine parts and scrap metal and red on the wires. And finally, I went over most areas with a just homemade wash made from watered down black acrylic paint. I made sure to add a little more to all of the cracks and crevices to give it that really water weathered look. And that was it for the painting. Now I could have stopped there and had this been a regular ruin or some other sci-fi setting, I might have, or I might have added more rust and dust. But this is Diluvian Chronicles, and in Diluvian Chronicles, the world is overgrown. So I got out my favorite railroad flocking, and with a little more of that watered down PVA, jammed every nook and cranny I could find with mossy green. And once everything was sufficiently overgrown, I filled up a little spritzer with an even more watered down version of that PVA, and doused all of my hard work in a homemade sealant. This seems to have worked out so far as a sealant, but we'll see how it holds up to playtesting. Now, let's see how it turned out. And there we are. I am super happy with how these turned out and I cannot wait to get them into a game. They really inspire me to keep working on my miniatures and to actually have fun playtesting my game, even if it's just by myself. And they're really not that difficult to make or particularly time consuming. So at some point, I'm probably going to make a few more of these to fill out a larger board. As much as I love rusty models, I think I might like moss just a bit more. But for now, it's time to head back to the computer and finish sculpting out my crew. So if you want to see how that turns out or see these in a game, then stick around here on the channel. And if you want to see more, then follow me over on Instagram or Twitter. And of course, if you decide to make your own post-apocalyptic Spire Seas style terrain, then please let me know, either down in the comments or on social media. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching and maybe even learned something in the process. See you next time.